Hello, my soccer universe. Well, that was a very interesting um, first Champions League knockout evening uh, where you saw very disciplined performances from teams where you didn't necessarily expect seeing them. Uh, and both outsiders won, which gave me kind of which jersey shall I wear? Shall I put on Atleti? Shall I put on the Dortmund jersey, that new one that I have? I charge for Atleti in the end because the Dortmund jersey I uh, wore in the preview for <laughs> this week. So I said, okay, I have not worn this jersey for a long time. And I decided to put the jersey of the four teams that are, that are in there up there. Something I cannot do for the Wednesday games, unfortunately. But we'll talk about them uh, soon. Anyway, um, let's start with the big one. Dortmund against PSG, which was for me the game that I really wanted to see uh, because I expected many goals. It took a while to get there. And it was mainly down to Dortmund being super disciplined, uh, something that they rarely show in the Bundesliga and not uh, going all out on attack. PSG, I think, had some trouble finding the rhythm with that, but um, PSG always was looking for this pass to get the two big ones, Mbappé and Neymar, going. Um, I was a little bit disappointed that uh, there was no Icardi um, in addition to Di Maria, but I guess in the away game Tuchel wanted to play it a little bit more on the safe side, uh, which I do understand in a way, and Di Maria has been in outstanding form in France. But uh, from what I could see, it was not a big factor yesterday. Um, it was more Mbappé who um, caused trouble. And of course, Neymar uh, was very vi visible lying on the ground most of the time. Uh, eight big games. I mean, I barely see PSG. Uh, but I have the feeling in France, he's not falling as much as he does in uh, bigger games. Very every one. There was one where John finally really hit him and he... He was dying there. I mean, he John comes to apologize to him, and he's still lying, lying around. Either he has a very, very low threshold for pain, even lower than mine, or he's really just faking it all over the place. But surprisingly, it was then Dortmund who got more of the game, uh, who got the chances. Uh, and you could see there were many shots. I mean, PSG had one uh, shot on goal. Uh, but that didn't hit the goal. It was a free kick by Neymar early on, I think. And then uh, it was Jaden Sancho who had uh, two pretty big chances. There was one counter attack where I have, have to say that there was John Sancho and Holland running, and John needs to play to Holland at that point. He didn't. He played to San San Sancho. Um, Holland couldn't get to the header then, uh, and Holland had had another minor chance. But you know, ended nil nil at the half kind of surprisingly, but you could see that Dortmund is well into the game and they rewarded themselves um, around the 60th uh, when Haaland found the breakthrough in typical Haaland fashion. There was nothing offside. He just pull, uh, pushes through in, in a way. This clear goal and from a close range can net it home uh, and makes, of course, a celebration that is already famous where he is going the Zen position was actually pretty cool and very well deserved that at that point uh, you didn't think that PSG is gonna add much. 75th minute it just took one explosive run from Pape. Uh, that's what this player is capable of. You could, he doesn't have, have it often but if he has it this is unstoppable. Um, and plays a cross in where Neymar is all free and can slot it home 1 1. I think everyone at Dortmund was devastated because this came literally out of nowhere. But uh, Dortmund was not deterred and <laughs> shot sh sh after. Suddenly, Harlan finds himself at the edge of the box and from um, distance nets it home with Kaelin Lavas, who had a good game, I think. Uh, can well, it was not much to hold for him either, but you know, when he was needed, he could uh, hold, hold up. Slotted home 2 1 for uh, Dortmund, and I think they could have even gone for that. They could have even made it 3 1, but you know, you don't want to open yourself up too much because those PSG strikers are deadly if they just get the slightest chance. And you saw it when Mbappe scored that goal. The story of the other game. Is this was a vintage Atleti performance? Uh, 
right from the get-go. They attack Liverpool, something that Liverpool probably did not really expect. And you could see that Van Dijk in the third minute causes a corner kick that was entirely unnecessary. And from that corner kick, um, the ball comes in, it lands off Fabinho's foot and he makes the perfect pass to, uh, to uh, Raul Niguez. Saul Niguez, not uh, Raul Saul. Saul Niguez, who can slot it home in the fourth minute. It's 1-0 Atleti. And I don't think Liverpool was all that shocked about it, but you could see that Atleti had suddenly the upper hand. And uh, they had a few more good chances where uh, especially Morata should have made it 2-0. Uh, Liverpool had all the possession, but Atleti did what Atleti does best. Hang deep, stand, be, low, be very uh, close to your own box and avoid what Liverpool does best. This is the transition play to get the ball and then make a counter -hack. The game played perfectly into, into Atleti's hands. And they had chances, they had shots on goal, something that Liverpool didn't have. Liverpool had two good chances in the second half, one by Mo Salah and especially one by Henderson, where I thought this would go in. I mean, if this he can get it on goal, it would have gone in. There was no way that Oblak was getting there. But Atleti hangs on and gets a famous victory. This was only the second time Liverpool has been beaten where they played the full squad. That's a statistic, and the teams that they have they, that have beaten Liverpool, I think, it's even more incredible, because that was Napoli, who are now in the mid table, and it's Atletico Madrid, who is doing slightly better in Spain, but still um, not having a great season. Anyway, so uh, that was the those those were the Tuesday games. Uh, Let's see how Wednesday was going. Well, what can I say? I definitely don't have the jerseys of the teams that won yesterday, so you have the losers back there. And I'm wearing an Italy 2006 jersey. I hope Atalanta fans will not mind this one. Uh, it's the closest I have to a black and blue jersey. That's not Inter. And me with my million loving ways, black and blue is not something that I have frequently in my wardrobe in my collection. But I've been looking at Atalanta shirts as of late because the way they're playing they are actually quite exciting and I would love to have uh, an Atalanta jersey as well. I don't want to start though uh, with Atalanta. Uh, generally, I mean, uh, the games yesterday were not as exciting as I think on Tuesday, but there were more goals scored and there should have been more goals scored. Um, and I'm looking at you Leipzig <laughs> and against Spurs. Leipzig had so many chances that they only come out with a 1-0 win. It's kind of a travesty and it's very interesting. I heard now the German and the English reaction a little bit to it and uh, the, the ones are complaining how bad Spurs were, the English one, and the other ones are complaining how perfect Leipzig were, but if they would have scored more goals. That's the one thing that everyone agrees on. Leipzig should have scored way more. Um, yeah, Spurs were not good, as from what I could tell. Yes, there were in injuries. Should you use this as an excuse? No, because I think your defensive setup was still very much what you have. Uh, just be a little bit creative offensively. That's my personal opinion. Uh, and Leipzig also had... Their main centre-back was missing. Uh, they also had uh, to... Uh, do adjustments, and you can take advantage of that. But then again, within 90 seconds, Leipzig should have had the lead. Uh, and Timo Werner should have had a hat trick, and Patrick Schick probably a brace. That's all I can say to, to this game. Uh, it was ridiculous the chances that Leipzig were missing. I love these Leipzig jerseys, by the way. They look absolutely fantastic. They are fantastic jerseys. <laughs> they are a little bit out of it, but they are fantastic. Uh, and it needed a penalty that I was actually afraid the team of Werner will shoot, uh, will miss again. Uh, Lima was um, tackled by Ben Davis in the box, and um, Werner for once hits the goal. To be honest, I said it before, I say it again. I'm not rating uh, Lima that highly for the simple reason. Uh, Lima, him I rate highly. Werner that highly. He should score way more goals than he actually gets. And in the other game, Atalanta <laughs> uh, makes the debut in the knockout stages of the Champions League. Well, they made the debut in the Champions League this year, so it's a double debut. debut. And 
I was looking forward to, to this game mainly because of Atalanta and I wanted to see how they will do against the Valencia side that are actually slightly favored but I knew that Atalanta can really 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 hurt them and really hurt them they did um, they had good chances Pazalic should have made it 1-0 there was a free kick by Papu Gomez um, but Hatepur makes it 1-0 in the uh, 16th minute after an assist by Gomez. Um, and that's the amazing thing that Atalanta, yes, they only have had two Italians in the starting lineup, Golini and Caldara, but the players that they have are no names, but they are so good. Um, that to me is the simply the amazing thing. Um, but I have to say that this 1-0, yes, then Atalanta had maybe a, a chance or so, but then actually it invited Valencia and Ferran Ton, uh, Torres hit the post at one point. And a little bit later, across from Gedesh, uh, if someone can connect there, I mean, it was so close. It should have been 1-1. One, one. And probably at that time it would have been deserved because um, Atalanta kind of... I don't want to say retreated, but uh, Valencia had a lot more initiative. But this lasted for only about 20 minutes or so, and then uh, Ilicic is surrounded by three uh, three Valencia players, makes two steps and smashes it in the upper left corner. 2-0, and basically that is the decider in the game already. Great individual effort by Ilicic, who has been outstanding uh, this year. Second half, I thought that Valencia will do everything and probably, um, in a way, they they opened themselves up and Atalanta took absolute advantage of that. Remo Freuler curls a shot in in the 57th that was just a joy to watch. That was the pick of the bunch, I would say, of yeah, the Haaland goal. The second one was also, also great. Either the Haaland or the Freuler goal. I think I would still go with the Freuler goal. Really nicely taken and again. Remo Freuler, who heard of him before? Now he's Atalanta. And then Hattebuer makes it five minutes later, 4-0. Uh, and then um, the commentator pulled out an interesting uh, stat. An Italian team has never scored more than four goals in the Champions League. Didn't, maybe in the Champions League knockout stages. I don't know. I have to, that's something I have to uh, research for sure. Um, however, little dent in there. Cherishev pulls one back for one, and then uh, Atalanta, instead of making the fifth, or um, Valencia had chances to make a uh, second one. But with 4 1, you look comfy. Again, being a Milan fan, I know that a 4 1 does not mean that you've qualified, but it looks very, very, very good for Atalanta. And thus, I'll end the UEFA mandated first part of the round of 16 uh, Champions League. 2019-2020 uh, uh, and yeah we'll see next week how the others go the other first legs will go and who will move on in any case drop me a comment below what you thought about the games uh, that were happening this week give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this we'll talk to you soon bye Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos or playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I'm going to wish you a wonderful day. Bye.